Well, we're starting on the heart now. In a way, we've already begun the cardiovascular system because in the cardiovascular system, it is a transportation system and the trucks and stuff that are carrying everything through that transportation system are the blood and we already did the blood. But now we're talking about the heart and as we discuss the heart, let's begin with doing a really quick review of information you should know from 150. So the next 10 or so slides in particular, you should know from your class in 150. I want you to remember that the two small chambers at the top of the heart are this way, <laughs> are the atria, atria is the plural of atrium, and that the two larger, more muscular chambers at the bottom of the heart are the ventricles. Um, make sure you know all of the blood vessels and all of the uh, valves in the heart, because all of that is fair game for exam three. Uh, the right ventricle, the right ventricle is not just on the right side of the heart in humans, it is also making up most of the front of the heart. And the left ventricle is not just the left, but it's also in the back of the heart. So um, the right and left ventricle, the heart is not symmetrical. The ventricles are not sitting there side by side like this. They're twisted a little bit like this. Uh, make sure you understand that the interventricular septum, even though it is made out of myocardium, it is important because it is a dividing wall between the two ventricles and also because it carrying, carries the conductive tissues that are so important for the electrical activity of the heart. Uh, what else is really important here? Oops. Um, uh, the left atrium is going to be receiving blood from the pulmonary circulation and sending it to the left ventricle. Um, the blood from the pulmonary circulation is going to be bright red because it is filled with oxygen because it has just come from your lungs. Um, Make sure you know the bicuspid valve is the same as the mitral valve. It's also known as the left atrioventricular valve. Personally, I like that name best, but the, the term mitral valve is very persistent in human medicine. The left ventricle. The left ventricle has got the hardest job to do because it has to generate the greatest amount of, of force in order to push blood uh, through the systemic circulation. Remember that both ventricles contain papillary muscles attached to the chordae tendinae, and the chordae tendinae attach the papillary muscles to the uh, valves. These chordae uh, tendinae attach to the papillary muscles. The papillary muscles are not pulling the valve open. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, uh, but the papillary muscles are there to prevent the valve from flopping backwards, right? So make sure you review the structure of the heart. This is the back of the heart. Here we can see this is the left atrium. The left atrium is, is on the left side of the heart, but it's also towards the back. We're looking at this heart from the posterior aspect. And you can see there are one, two, three, four pulmonary veins that are bringing blood back to the left atrium. And that is depicted as red because the blood in those veins is very high in oxygen and low in CO2. So the heart has got four chambers. The receiving chambers are the atria. The, uh, the, each atrium has got an oracle, sort of kind of has an ear on it. Um, that ear part is uh, very unusual in construction. I hope you've had a chance to see a um, dissected heart in your lab. That, uh, that oracle structure, it does allow the, uh, the oracle to receive a greater volume of blood when you are exercising than it does when you are at rest. And the way it is created discourages the generation of blood clots in the oracle when we are just hanging out and not exercising really hard. The ventricles, the lower chambers, 
they are, you know, the pumping chambers. They're the ones responsible for really moving the blood. You know, the job of the right atrium is just to generate up enough force so that it can fill up the right ventricle. But that's not very hard to do. And that's why the muscle in the areas of the atria is relatively thin. But the ventricles have a hard job to do. The left ventricle, much more difficult than the right ventricle. Now, it's just a quirk of the evolutionary design of the heart that blood goes down into the ventricles, and then in order to leave, it has to go back up again. And one of the challenges that life has with these things called hearts is it needs to make it so that every heart begins the ventricular contraction, which is called ventricular systole, from the apex of heart and spiral and works its way upward. And that's one of the uh, things that we will be discussing in our lectures about um, the cardiovascular system. Now, I want to emphasize something that uh, tends to give people a hard time about the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system, the heart itself, is like two pumps that just happen to be stuck together in the center, right? There's a right pump that is busy pumping blood to your lungs. And there's a left pump that is busy pumping blood to the rest of your body. So at first, when we are discussing the cardiovascular system, the heart, we'll be talking about the heart as if it's got a right side and a left side, right? Later on, I'll be asking you to think of it as a top and a bottom, but let's set that aside for now. Now, the blood coming into the right side of the heart is venous blood from the vena cava. And it's the type of venous blood that looks blue to us when we look at it through our skin. It is, it, it is that darker color because this systemic venous blood has given away its oxygen and it's also accepted carbon dioxide. So when blood comes into the right side of the heart, this is my right, and comes into the right side of the heart, then um, it is blue. And as it leaves the right side of the heart, still blue, right? Still low in oxygen. Why would it not be? Now, when it leaves the heart, it's leaving in the pulmonary artery. And that is why pulmonary arteries, the pulmonary trunk and all of the pulmonary arteries, they're arteries, but the blood inside of them is blue, okay? It does make sense when you think of it. It's just left the heart, so by definition, it's in an artery. But it had no chance to pick up oxygen, so why would it be red? The pulmonary arteries are really the only arteries in the body where the blood does have that darker color, when the blood is blue, right? It's low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide. And then the blood is going to go to the lungs, and it's going to the lungs to pick up oxygen. It also drops off this waste product, carbon dioxide, CO2. And then it goes back to the heart. And as it's going back to the heart, it's going back to the left side of the heart. And as it's going back into the heart, it goes into the left atrium. How does it go back towards the heart? Well, blood going back towards the heart is found in veins. And so the blood that's in the pulmonary veins is a really bright red color. When I think about this transportation system and I think about the heart, I kind of imagine it like this. I imagine that there are these trucks and they go to a warehouse and first thing in the morning, they fill themselves up with boxes of whatever they're going to deliver. And then they, they go out and they deliver their boxes to all the little houses and at the houses, they're going to deliver that box. And this guy's going to go, hey, by the way, I got some empty boxes. Could you take them back to the warehouse with you? And he says, sure, no sweat. And so the truck with all of these empty boxes goes back to the warehouse, drops them all off, right? Pretty simple. Fills itself up, goes out to the houses, comes back with all of the trash and no product, fills up with product, drops off the trash, goes out over and over and over again, right? Now, in this analogy, uh, blood that is, is that the, the trucks that are filled with product are going to be like your blood when it's filled up with oxygen. It's got lots of oxygen. It's got no trash in it, right? And so that blood is going to go out to all of the cells in the systemic circulation. 
So the cells of your brain, of your muscles, of your kidneys, of your liver, of your intestines, okay? Dropping off the oxygen. And as it drops off the oxygen, the blood changes color. It kind of turns a darker color, looks blue to us. And at the same time, it picks up trash. What's the trash? In this analogy, the trash is carbon dioxide, CO2. So the blood that's coming back towards your heart is low in oxygen and it's high in CO2. And it looks kind of blue. It goes into the right side of the heart and then the right side of the heart pushes it to the lungs. And when it goes through the lungs, it picks up oxygen and drops off the CO2, comes back to the heart red, right? So it, it's pretty simple when you think about it, that blood is just picking up oxygen, dropping off CO2, goes to the heart, gets a little push, drops off oxygen, picks up CO2, go back to the heart, gets a little push, goes to the lungs, picks up oxygen, drops off CO2, over and over and over again, right? But let's look at it the way it technically is in our textbooks. The heart's a two-sided pump and it's got two major divisions. One is called the pulmonary circuit, also known as the pulmonary circulation. The other is the systemic circuit, also known as the systemic circulation. The pulmonary circulation starts at the right side of the heart and takes the blood to the lungs and then back from the lungs to the left side of the heart. That, this part going from the right side of my heart out to my lungs and then back to my heart, pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation doesn't have very much blood in it. Actually, a surprisingly small amount of blood is found in the pulmonary circulation at any given moment. Um, and the pressure on that side of the body is actually, that side of the circulation is also lower. The systemic circulation is the left side of the heart and everywhere else, everywhere else, okay? So the right side pumps to the lungs. You know, sometimes people will ask me, is the right atrium a part of the pulmonary circulation or the systemic circulation? The answer is, I don't care. Okay? That's not a question I'm going to ask you. But I will ask you, is blood in the pulmonary artery high in oxygen, low in CO2, low in oxygen, high in CO2? That is the kind of question I will ask you, right? Now, I know that there are some of you that are like me and they were like, why don't these anatomists just get off their high horse and just call this a vein, call that an artery and let me get on with my life. The reason that they will not is that they should not and we will discuss why this pulmonary trunk should be considered an artery even though the blood in there is blue, why it should not be considered an artery when we talk about blood vessels, all right? pulmonary circulation. We will pick up here in our next video.